is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. I'm Anna Klee. EuroAsia Shorts, a multi-embassy international film festival in D.C., weaves cultures together, one tale at a time. EBC's Eliza Gonzalez Monglik Mot shares with us some of this year's festival highlights. Take a look. Set in the District of Columbia, it is described as an international cinematic dialogue that is uniquely Washingtonian. This year, with the theme Youth, EuroAsia Shorts brings to the U.S. Capitol short films about experiences of the young, some epic like life-altering events, others poignant as the start or end of a relationship, others still as edifying as overcoming a life of relentless poverty. EuroAsia Shorts is a unique film festival in Washington, D.C. It's the only multi-embassy international short film festival in our area. That's a kind of a niche a program, but of course the films are also very unique. And each year is a different theme. This year we have 11 countries participating. Uh, it's a combination of countries from Europe and Asia. We also have films from the U.S. tonight for the closing night, our big celebration. But the core of EuroAsia Shorts is a discussion, a dialogue between countries. So every night throughout the past week, we started a week ago, and this is the closing, every night has a dialogue, a discussion with speakers, discussants, because we want to talk about what makes these countries unique, what makes them uh, different from one another, but what they have in common each well, as well. More than 30 short films about the youth from 11 countries were shown in just a week. Festival organizers agree that although created by filmmakers of diverse cultural roots, the movies each carried a universal message meant to bridge gaps and transcend the divide. When we see homelessness, as we saw in the Philippine film today, um, we understand that homeless children are, is not just a problem in the Philippines, that we see that on our streets every day, um, and we I think it helps build empathy. It helps us to understand that there are universal problems that we, we are encountering, that our youth are encountering, and, and hopefully it opens our eyes to the fact that, that this, isn't, uh, this isn't just a problem elsewhere, that this is also a problem at home. By its nature, film is really an inclusive, and I would have to say um, universally appealing art form. And that's actually the, uh, the impetus that, you know, that um, encourage all of these embassies to come together and do this um, short film festival. But with a, ch with a choice of a single theme, we try to present, mm -hmm. you know, um, our perspectives coming from our cultural traditions, mm -hmm. As you said, um, bridging the different cultures is a goal, mm -hmm. but um, another goal would have to be just to present your point of view, right, from the country where we came from. How the different um, cultures um, interpret the theme or interrogate the theme. So for, for us at the Philippine Embassy, this is a wonderful opportunity also to, um, to really celebrate the diversity of, uh, of all the cultures in the world, especially those of the embassies that are represented in this festival. When people watched, for instance, the film Rose Empire from Germany or, or the film F Follower, which is from Germany, you know, I mean, these, these themes could have just as easily been transplanted into mm -hmm. one of the Asian countries showing films and vice versa, I think. Uh, although then, of course, the plots, you know, they would be shaped by, of course, the attitudes of the countries in which they are taking place. But I think still uh, what what I think at the core of it is you have a major theme and then you just sort of put it into the setting and you say, OK, in this cultural in this cultural like realm, like how would how would something like that play out versus in another country? And and then when you look at it, I think all at once the way you, we do when we screen these films, uh, you realize that there are differences, but there are a lot of similarities as well. Some entries this year were observed to lack suggestions of the youthful innocence and unadulterated joy typified by generations past, something that representatives of participating embassies said very likely mirrored the way young people around the world live today or the sad truth that children of our times tend to grow up too fast. To sugarcoat what's happening of the, with the youth today would be to do, do 
them a disservice. Um, we we hear in the media constantly that this is the least optimistic uh, generation and that they are concerned about climate change, they are concerned about getting jobs, their futures, uh, they're delaying having families because they don't necessarily know whether or not there's going to be a future for their own children. Um, I think this is also something we see in, in previous generations as well, but, but the youth that are creating these films really, you know, they are showing the angst that they are currently experiencing and putting it up on the screen. I think it's hard telling a sad story when um, the lead character or the characters, main characters of the story are children because it hurts our hearts so deeply. Um, but I think that it's a very powerful way to tell a story because people can empathize so quickly and so easily with children and we, we have all had that experience as a child and, and seen things that maybe we shouldn't. Um, it's, I, I think it works. I think there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable seeing children in difficult stories. Um, but I, I think that sometimes those are the most powerful stories to tell. It's a roller coaster of emotion sometimes. Mm -hmm. And and so for me, um, as long as it touches the audience, mm -hmm. it resonates, mm -hmm. it's relevant to them, they can relate to it, then I guess that's a successful film showing. And through the works of these young filmmakers mm -hmm. from the Philippines and from Germany and from the other um, countries, that, you know, when it's the youth experience, the, the youth experiences things differently mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we look back to our own youth, mm -hmm. you realize um, uh, your perspective just changed. We don't want to put on a fake image or impression. Um, so we get the films and each year it's a little different. Sometimes the mood can be a little more positive or negative, um, but it's all an authentic experience. For example, this year we had youth. Interestingly, a lot of the films were a bit more adult topics, you know, coming of age, um, young adults. Uh, these things that are, you know, becoming an adult. So, about youth, but not always for kids. <laughs> Created in an age when a viewer's attention tends to be pulled in many different directions, EuroAsia Shorts 2019, with some entries as short as four minutes, seeks to engage audiences in meaningful discourses on timeless subjects such as love, responsibility, honesty, failure, and the old-time favorite, heartbreak. Yes, indeed, film is a very inclusive art form. That The one from the Philippines actually stood out to me because I identified with it the most. I uh, had a sense when I was watching the little kid get ready for school that that was me when I was little. So watching the, the boy sort of pump the water to, to rinse his face, um, I instantly had a connection with him on that level. It, it, brought, back, it brought back memories of, of, of sort of, uh, you know, wanting to go to school. And I grew up in a, um, a homeless shelter, so um, the notion that, you know, school was, it, it was an intangible goal. It was there. We're going to get there someday. And, of course, now I, I work on K Street, so it all seems uh, ridiculous that, you know, getting an education wasn't something in my future. But, you know, I can, I can identify with that little kid who... who you know, sort of for me, once, a, once upon a time, getting an education was not something that you just kind of woke up and you did. In all honesty, all the films were amazing, but the short film from the Philippines, what just, I almost cried. I may cry now. <laughs> it was really powerful. Every year is exciting, every year is different. Maybe even more countries, we'll see. But, you know, it's an annual tradition, first week in June here in Washington, D.C., and we're going to keep going. There's, there's no way we're going to stop a program like this that is a win-win-win for everybody. Screenings of these shorts from 11 countries were held at the host embassy venues. Countries paired together this year were Korea and Austria, Japan and Italy, Germany and the Philippines, Spain and Indonesia, France and China, and tonight, the final night, all 10 countries with the United States. Thus, this year's EuroAsia Shorts Festival bows out. From the Italian Embassy here in Washington, D.C., I am Eliza Gonzalez Manglik Mod for Eagle News, 1 with 25. Thanks, Eliza. 
Looking forward to next year's festival. That is today's Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Join us tomorrow for stories that matter to you. Visit our websites at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on twitter.com slash eaglenewsph and facebook.com slash eaglenewsph. Thank you for watching. I'm Anna Kui, and I'm one with 25.